Uh, we, I, as you guys just heard, we are going to be recording today's webinar. So if you do need to cut out early for any reason, um, please know that you'll be able to access a recording of today's webinar shortly. Uh, we are going to be sending the webinar off to be closed captioned for accessibility purposes after everything is done today. And then once that's ready to share out publicly, we will email a copy of the recording to all of our registered participants today. And we'll also be posting it for public viewing on the Harvard Extension School YouTube page as well. I want to get started by telling you guys a little bit about what RIA and I's Office and Enrollment Services does um, here at the Extension School, just so you have a better idea of how we can help you throughout your journey at the Extension School or the Summer School. So we're here, our office is here to help you navigate a lot of different things. Um, we're working really closely with students from their first point of contact through the completion of their first two or three courses at the Extension School. Uh, so we can help you with navigating the course catalog, creating your student account and getting logged in for the first time, registering for courses, learning more about our academic programs at the Extension School, whether that's a degree program, certificate program, or just taking some general courses for fun or to transfer over to your home institution. We can also provide you with some financial information and information on different student services, like our accessibility services team, um, who's a great resource for all of our students. Um, I do want to note here that we do have a separate admissions office. Um, I know a lot of you sent in some admissions related questions to us um, to answer today, uh, but our teams are separate. Um, so just wanted to make that distinction. Um, typically when a student is completing their final course towards admission into a program, that's when they'll start moving away from our office to work more closely with one of our admissions advisors. And then once they're admitted into their program, they will then work very closely with an academic advisor. So at the end of today's webinar, we are going to provide you with some contact information for admissions office resources in case you'd like to reach out to them. Uh, but we are gonna go through a lot of the information about getting started with your journey at the Extension School and the Summer School um, and a lot of the different academic offerings that we have here at the Extension School. So we provided a lot of detail in the slides today. Um, so hopefully if you go back to reference this presentation and in, in the future, um, you'll be able to get a lot of great information in case you missed anything today. So just some housekeeping notes um, for our webinar today. I mentioned that we are recording the webinar. Um, so please be on the lookout for that shortly. Um, it might be sometime early next week when we're able to share that out publicly once the closed captioning is done. And then for the Q&A, um, you will notice there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen here in Zoom. If you have any questions for us today, feel free to drop those in. Um, I see that looks like two questions have come in already. Um, so we will have our enrollment services specialist, Derek and Justina, answering those questions. Um, and I'll be jumping in to answer some of them at certain points today as well. Uh, we are asking that the Q&A be kept more general. Um, due to time limitations, we're not going to be able to answer every individual type question today. Um, we realize that a lot of you may have questions specific to your own situations or goals that you're hoping to achieve. Um, for those more specific questions, we are going to give you our contact information at the end of the webinar. We definitely want you to reach out to us so that we can help to guide you in the right direction. Um, but those questions may be a little bit tougher for us to answer in the Q&A today. Um, we're also going to be doing um, a short Q&A session at the end of the webinar today, too, where we answer some of the more common questions that you guys submitted to us um, as part of your registration for today's webinar. So I want to give a brief overview of the Division of Continuing Education. You may hear the acronym DCE repeated a lot um, throughout today's webinar, and we really want you to understand what DCE is comprised of. So the Division of Continuing, Continuing Education is made up of four parts. Harvard Extension School, Harvard Summer School, Professional Development Programs, and Harvard's Institute for Learning and Retirement. The Extension School offers undergraduate and graduate degree programs, as well as undergraduate and graduate certificates. And each academic year, we offer over 1,000 plus online open enrollment courses. Harvard Summer School allows students to earn credit towards Extension School undergraduate and graduate academic offerings. And we also have a lot of students who will take classes with us over the summer and transfer them back to their home institution for credit. So definitely know that that's an option for you too. And this summer, we're proud to offer over 400 online open enrollment courses through the summer school. Our professional development programs are majority two-day online programs that focus on a wide range of management-related topics, um, such as leadership, communications, marketing, and negotiations. 
And our Institute for Learning and Retirement is designed for retired adult learners ages 55 and over. Um, right now, this community is comprised of over 550 students, and they offer over 120 courses each year. Uh, we do get a lot of questions from time to time about accreditation, so I did want to address that here. Um, Extension School is accredited by the New England Commission of Higher Education, and we are one of the 12 degree-granting institutions within Harvard University. Um, we received a lot of questions from you guys uh, about COVID-19 and what is happening on campus, so we wanted to go ahead and address those up front today as well. Um, as you can tell um, from our backgrounds, our staff is continuing to work remotely. Um, so that is something that's been in place since March of last year and is continuing at least until the early fall. Um, right now, our confirmed plans are that all of our summer term courses will be held online this summer. Um, so this decision is final and will not change. Um, we've had some students asking if it will change based on vaccine eligibility um, and that moving forward. Um, but just out of caution and safety for our students, we are going to hold all of our um, summer courses on, um, online this summer. There's a lot of unknowns though past the summer. Um, so we do wanna let you guys know that we do not yet know what our fall plans are to return to campus. Um, we don't know what our fall plans are gonna be for course offerings. We've had a lot of you ask about the possibility of on-campus courses, but we're not sure what that looks like right now. Um, we're not really sure what access to on-campus resources and buildings looks like, as well as ID cards issuance. So a lot of things are still up in the air um, when it comes to the fall term and the spring 2022 term, but we do hope to be able to provide students with more information about those plans um, by the time that we get started with the summer term. So we do want to thank you all for your continued patience and understanding um, as we continue to work through these unprecedented times, um, but just know that Harvard is doing everything that uh, we can as a university to keep everyone safe um, and following all of the public health guidance that's available right now. All right, so we're gonna dive into our academic offerings now, which I briefly alluded to a moment ago. So first I wanna talk about our degree programs for anyone who's interested in starting with these over the summer. We have two of them. Our undergraduate degree program is our Bachelor, Bachelor of Liberal Arts degree, and our graduate degree programs are our Master of Liberal Arts degree. So on the undergraduate side of things, um, this degree program is designed for working adults. Um, students do have to be five years removed from high school to start um, taking courses that will count for credit towards earning this degree. There's over 12 fields of study to choose from. And in total, you'll be taking 128 credits to complete this degree program, which equals out to 32 courses. You are allowed to transfer in up to 64 credits. So if you started your undergraduate degree somewhere else and would like to finish it at Harvard Extension School, you can definitely do so. And there's no time limit for completion. Uh, we do realize that everyone will probably be completing this program while balancing a lot of other responsibilities. So there is that flexibility there um, to take your time to complete your courses. On the graduate side of things, um, similarly, these degree programs are designed for working adults with bachelor's degrees. There's over 20 fields of study to choose from, and you'll be completing 12 courses, which equals 28 or 48 credits um, as part of these programs. You will need to take all courses through the Extension School or Harvard Summer School. You're not allowed to transfer in credit towards graduate degree programs, and there is a five-year timeline for completion once you've been admitted into your degree program. For our certificates, we're really excited this academic year to be offering four brand new undergraduate certificates. Um, these are coding, web development, professional communications, and social justice. There's no applications required for either certificate, undergraduate or graduate certificates. Um, both sets of certificates are designed for students ages 18 plus, and both sets of certificates can be completed 100% online. There is a three-year time limit though, so that's important to keep in mind. That timer starts at, on the first day of your for, first course towards earning a certificate. Um, for our undergraduate certificates, these require the completion of three courses um, that you must earn a grade of B or higher in in order to earn their certificate. For the graduate certificates, the total number of courses will vary based on your certificate. Some require three courses, some require four, and some may require five. Um, similar to the undergraduate certificates, you do need to complete all of your graduate certificate courses with a grade of B or higher in order to earn your certificate. We also had some questions come in from everyone about student support services. Um, so I wanted to highlight that we do have pretty robust services for our students. Um, that includes academic advising, a math question center, a writing center, career services, access to Harvard libraries, um, which you can 
still access um, online right now in the midst of COVID. Um, once we're back on campus again, you'll have access to some study and collaboration spaces, and as I previously mentioned, accessibility services as well. Um, if you happen to have some time and want to check out um, YouTube, we do have a video that explains the student experience at Harvard Extension School in more detail. Um, so we were able to interview a lot of students, alumni, and staff members to get their perspective on taking classes at the Extension School. So definitely encourage you guys to look that up if you would like some more information on this topic. All right, so I am going to pass things over to Rhea now for some information about how to get started with your Extension School journey. Thanks so much, Sean. Um, again, my name is Rhea Rano. I, I'm also an ALB candidate. Uh, I'll be graduating next May and I started my academic journey uh, at the summer school. I took my very first class as a seven week class uh, in the summer school. Um, all right, so let's chat a little bit about summer 2021. Uh, we will be offering three sessions. The first is a seven week session, uh, which will run from June 21st through August 6th. Uh, and then we have two three-week sessions, um, which will happen back to back. So the first uh, will be from June 21st through July 8th, and the second will run uh, from July 12th through the 29th. Um, and you can take courses here to start working towards a degree like myself or a certificate, uh, or you can take courses just for personal and professional development. Uh, course registration is now open uh, and will run uh, through mid-June. And we have over 400 online courses right now for you to choose from. Uh, and then just a gentle reminder as well that everything is going to be offered online. This summer, we will not be having any on-campus classes and that decision is final. So the first thing that you'll wanna do um, when you are thinking about taking courses with us is, is to create a My DCE dashboard, uh, which we just rolled out in the last couple months. If you have taken courses with us in the past or maybe just checking in today, um, you may already have one of these. You may have heard about the correspondences related to them. Uh, we've made a little mock-up here of our friend John Harvard uh, for you to take a look at. Um, so you can use your My DCE student account to update your personal pro profile information. So uh, your preferred name, your preferred pronouns, all your contact information, that's something that you can use the dashboard for. Uh, you can complete your pre-registration each term. So at the beginning of each semester, we'll ask that you just make confirm all of your contact information uh, just so that we know that our systems are the most up-to-date uh, with your information so we can best support you. Uh, you can also access course registration, your student finance portal, and Canvas. Uh, so Canvas is a little different from the MyDCE dashboard. That's your course website. So where you'll actually be like heading into Zoom and, and hanging out with your class, that's where, uh, that's where you, you'll find that in Canvas. So you'll have access to direct links to Canvas through your dashboard. Um, once you add courses, you'll also be able to view your course schedule in MyDCE. Uh, and you can connect to online services there as well. So the goal is to, to migrate online services into the MyDCE dashboard uh, in the coming months. But for now, uh, that is the place that you are going to physically register for courses. So here on the MyDCE uh, screenshot, you'll see a little quick link that says course registration, and that will always take you directly to the online services account. Um, so along with registering for courses there, you can also take your placement tests. Um, so some courses may require that you take a prerequisite test. Uh, for example, uh, if you're interested in our pro seminars, right, which is a class that you have to take if you are interested in, in getting into the ALM program, um, you would need to take something called the test of critical reading and writing skills. Um, which is just a 60 minute exam. We won't get too far into that. You can always shoot us an email if you want more information on it. Um, but placement tests like that will be taken in online services as well. Um, at the end of your semester, uh, you can also view your grades in online services. A lot of students think that they can view this in Canvas. Um, the official grades will always be in your online services account. Um, so that's something that you can check there as well. And then when you're done and you would like to perhaps request a transcript either to have your grade transferred to a different degree program outside of the extension school or perhaps you need to show uh, your employer that you've taken this course and done well in it, you can request a transcript uh, through online services as well. And then finally in the MyDCE dashboard, that's where all sorts of important school announcements will be. Um, so feel free to, 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 to explore that on your own time when you feel like it. 
Um, the other thing that you'll want to do as you're contemplating courses is to review the course catalog, right? Um, we have a really awesome course catalog that uh, has all sorts of really cool filters on it um, that will be upgraded as well in the coming year that we're excited to make more, uh, make intuitive, make more intuitive for our students. Um, there are two course catalogs. Uh, the first is for Harvard Extension School, which covers courses that are offered in the fall, the spring, and the summer. And then you have the summer school course catalog. So if you are looking to take a course that counts towards a degree program, you will always want to go to the extension school side. Uh, the extension school course catalog will have all sorts of fun filters um, that ensures that you can um, that you can find a course that that is applicable to your degree that will count towards one of the requirements. Um, it also has filters for uh, class times and instructors and sessions, all sorts of good stuff. So. The Extension School has the most filters that you can possibly have. So be sure to, to check that out. If you are instead just maybe taking a course for your own personal enjoyment or you know, your own professional development outside of a certificate or a degree, you can always feel free to use the Summer School website uh, or the Summer School course catalog. Um, that has some of the, the same basic filters such as timing and things like that, um, but it just doesn't have the filter to show you which courses count towards a degree or certificate here at the Extension School. Um, as Sean said, and as I've said already, um, all of our courses are going to be held online um, for the summer 2021. Uh, there are three different options uh, for, for courses. You can take an online only class, uh, which is a pre-recorded lecture that you are viewing at your leisure. Uh, there are dates and deadlines that you need to abide by in terms of submitting projects, things like that. Uh, but the lectures themselves can be viewed at any time. Uh, free. So this is really ideal for folks who are maybe outside of the time zone that we serve, um, but still want to be connected in some way. And in terms of connecting with other students and instructors, uh, there are usually lots of message boards that you can be a part of where you're connecting with your, your fellow peers. Um, and instructors generally have office hours um, or additional sections that you can attend outside of, of uh, regular times in which the class might be held. We also have online live web conferences. I'm taking my very last class right now is an online live web conference. You have to be at your computer in Zoom at the very exact time. They will not be recorded. Um, so it's required uh, for, uh, for attendance for you to be there on time. And then there are online on-demand web conferences. So like the standard live web conferences, they happen in real time. The only big difference is that they're recorded. And so you can, if you perhaps know you can make a couple of the sessions, maybe not all of them, um, it'll always be recorded for you so you can view them at a different time. Um, this is really important to know our time zone. Okay, our time zone, all of our classes are gonna be in Eastern time. Um, so you really need to be aware of that as you're choosing classes, especially if it's like an online live web conference. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are offering one seven week session and two back-to-back -back three week courses. Um, this leads into the next bullet point here about course credits and maximum enrollment per term. Um, so most of our courses are offered at the graduate, undergraduate, and non-credit status. Um, so you will be in a class with people who are in varying professional and academic backgrounds. Um, we do that because we love the diversity of a classroom in that way. Um, in terms of maximum enrollments, you can only take eight credits uh, during the summer semester. A lot of folks want to take more than that. I get it. Like it can be exciting to be at Harvard. This is a, you know, these are great courses, um, but it's the equivalent of taking a full-time load in the fall and spring semester. So if you're a working adult, you are not, you know, most folks would, would have trouble, would have difficulty um, holding on to a full-time course load, which is four or five classes. And we shrink that down. A standard fall or spring semester is 15 weeks. We shrink it down to seven weeks and even three weeks. Um, so it's super intensive. So be aware of that. Um, and in terms of maximum enrollments, generally students will take either, you know, two seven-week courses or they take back-to-back three-week courses. Um, you cannot take the same three-week session um, so you won't be able to sign up for two classes that happen in the first three week session. They have to be back to back. Um, and you also cannot take one seven week and one three week. It's just too intensive. And to ensure that everyone is successful, we have these maximum enrollment policies in place. Um, no exceptions will be made to that. Um, course prerequisites. 
Uh, so oftentimes in a course description, it'll probably list like maybe a couple of classes that you should have, you know, familiarity with. Uh, we don't require that you like show us proof that you've taken these classes. Um, however, it is what the instructor is expecting of you in terms of your required knowledge base. Um, so historically, if you want to be successful in this class, you should probably have familiarity with the subjects that are listed in the prerequisites. Um, and then in addition to that, I mentioned this a little earlier, some classes require placement tests. So we have placement tests for uh, some of our expository writing classes, uh, some of our math classes and our economics classes. Um, so just be aware of that. Take a look at the prerequisites, see if you can meet them uh, before starting to uh, contemplate registering for a course. Um, and course syllabi. Uh, so we upload syllabi in the order in which we receive them from instructors. Um, right now, we are still in the process of uploading those. So you may very well find things that are on the course catalog that don't have a syllabus attached to it. Um, you have two options. The first is we have an, uh, an archive section to our website. We try to have the same offerings from one year to the next. Uh, so you may very well be able to see that course from last year when it was offered um, and attached to that should be a syllabus. Um, and if you can't find it in the archives, perhaps it's a brand new class, um, you can always feel free to reach out to the instructor directly. Um, contact information for instructors can usually be found in the Harvard Web Directory. So if you just Google Harvard Web Directory, plug in their name, uh, their contact information should pull up. Um, and you can just reach out to them and see if they have a draft syllabus for you to take a look at. Um, and just a reminder that the course catalog is live on our website right now. We also just revamped our website, which is really cool. So it's summer.harvard.edu. Um, so you can take a look at it right now. Um, and then the fall 21, uh, fall 2021 course catalog uh, will be published online uh, sometime in July. English proficiency requirements. So this is a big one. We get lots of questions about this. Um, it is required if English is not your native language. Um, so if you have a native language that is anything other than English, we need you to provide um, English proficiency documentation. Um, this can be met in a few different ways. So we have, uh, you can earn the minimum score required on something like the TOEFL, the IELTS, or the PTE academic. Uh, these are all fairly accessible even in the pandemic. Um, you, for the internet-based TOEFL, the IBT, uh, the minimum score is 100. For IELTS, it's 7.0. And then for the PTEA, it is 70. Um, we are also offering a few additional uh, testing options for students because we know it's just kind of a weird time and whatever we can get access to is great. Um, so you can earn a minimum score of 100 on the TOEFL IBT Special Home Edition. Um, so a lot of folks have been taking advantage of that. Uh, or you can earn a minimum score of 125 on the Duolingo English test, uh, which is fairly accessible to a lot of folks. And then if you perhaps don't have time to take the test, but perhaps you have an official transcript that might show that you have completed work in English, um, you can submit an official transcript showing completion of a four-year high school or three or four-year bachelor's degree or even a graduate degree um, from a college or university in the United States, the United Kingdom, Republic of Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, or Canada, um, at which English is the sole language of instruction. Um, all the degrees have to have been earned. So do, if you are currently at a school in one of those countries and you haven't actually graduated, it will, will not be considered, it has to be completed. Um, and then transcripts from schools whose language of instruction is in English, um, but are not physically located in one of these six approved countries, those are also ineligible. So we're pretty tight on that, no exceptions are made. Um, and the EP requirement has to be made or it has to be met regardless of your educational or professional background. Uh, for the summer term, the English proficiency deadline is Thursday, June 10th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Um, this is just to ensure that we can have your documentation processed by the end of the registration period. So make sure you get it in if you need to. Um, and if you have any additional questions, you can always feel free to give us a call. Um, we'll, we'll have your, our contact information towards the end of this, um, of this webinar, or you can shoot an email to our English proficiency department at proficiency at Okay, so just let's do a quick rundown of what we all this information that we have gathered uh, in the last couple minutes together. Uh, before registering for courses, you want to create your cool MyDCE student account, that dashboard, 
you want to review the course catalog, make sure you are finding a course that works for you, that works towards whatever goal um, is ahead of you. Submit proof of English proficiency if English is not your native language, and then complete the pre-registration process in MyDC, which I briefly mentioned is just making sure that all of your contact and personal information is correct for our systems. And then when you're actually ready to register for a course, which is super exciting, um, no application is required for general program students. So adult and college learners, uh, this is you know, open enrollment. You can just register for your course. Um, you go to my DCE, you click on that quick link in the very top that I mentioned, course registration, which will take you to online services. Um, and then in your main menu, you'll click on course registration to add courses for the summer term 2021. Um, and then follow all the desired steps uh, to complete your, your registration. Oftentimes we get folks who call us and they're like, I'm not quite sure, I'm on this page and it says registration pending. Is there anything else that I need to do in order for me to register? No, nope, it just means that you are going through the process. So don't be worried about that. Everyone sees that alert. Um, it is not a bad thing. It's actually a really great thing. It means you're taking a step in the right direction. Um, and when you've successfully completed your registration, it'll change from registration pending to registration complete. Um, and then just a, a brief mention here, the course registration deadline is Thursday, June 17th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. I know folks will, they always give us a call on the 18th. I'm, I'm anticipating these calls, I'm hoping that we will make an exception to that. We will not. Um, you'll be put in touch with me. We'll have to chat about it. Um, I'll be sad for you and I still won't be able to do anything. So Thursday, June 17th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time is really important. That's the deadline you wanna stay on to. Um, course wait lists. So another big thing folks are always worried about what wait lists will look like and when they'll know and all that good stuff. Um, so first and foremost, our team is unable to predict any chance for admission into a course from wait lists. No team at DCE will be able to do that for you. Um, it's just a deck of cards. We don't, we don't know how it will shake out. Um, we move folks off of the wait list in the order in which they have registered for a course. Um, so we won't make any exceptions to that. We're not going to jump you up on a wait list. Um, it's just all dependent on who, you know, who registered first. Um, you will receive an email notification from the registrar's office once you've been re removed from the wait list. So be on the lookout for that if you really need to know uh, if you've gotten off the wait list. Um, and in addition to that, your course status in my DCE will change from wait list to registered. Um, so you'll get two options there. You'll get the email from the reg office letting you know that you've been taken off the wait list and your status in my DC will change. Um, this is really important. You must pay for any courses that you're waitlisted for by the full payment deadline, which is May 17th, in order to remain on the wait list for them. Um, if you don't pay for it, you'll be kicked off the wait list. Um, any courses that you don't pay for by May 17th, you'll be kicked off. Um, if you decide to add courses or add yourself to the wait list um, after May 17th, so there's a, a period of time that we'll talk about um, after May 17th where you can register for courses with immediate payment. Um, if you choose not to, to make an immediate payment at that time, um, you'll be dropped from it within 24 hours. And if you paid for courses before then, um, so say you registered for a class today, paid for it, and then added a course for a wait list later on down the road, um, you'll be dropped from everything, even the ones you paid for. So make sure you're paying attention to those deadlines and uh, staying on top of your bill. We do send tons and tons of reminder emails. So if you know that you have an outstanding bill and you haven't received an email, check your spam, check your junk. Um, we definitely are sending those to you. Um, and all wait lists are resolved by the course changes deadline every term. Um, and if you don't get into the waitlisted class, uh, you will receive a full tuition refund. Uh, and let's just chat a little bit about paying for school a bit here. So the cost for tuition for the summer 2021, um, it is the same for undergraduate, graduate, and non-credit, is uh, $3,400 for a four-credit course and $6,800 for an eight-credit course. Generally, we see eight credit courses for our sciences. Um, that's a big thing uh, that we have eight credit courses for. Um, if you are not admitted into a degree, degree program yet, so I'm pretty sure many of you won't be, um, we don't offer any kind of financial aid or scholarship for Harvard Summer School. Uh, Full-time students from other institutions um, who are maybe taking just classes with us and, and using them toward a degree at their home institute um, should arrange financial assistance at their home institute to be used here. 
Um, if you are an admitted degree program candidate, um, there is information about financial aid, including payment plans, private loans, veterans benefits, AmeriCorps, all the good stuff. Um, that can be found on our website, um, or you can get in touch with our student financial services office. Um, and their contact information is down here. Um, you can give them a phone call at 617-495-4293 um, or shoot them an email at that address provided. And then just again, I can't stress this enough, um, our payment deadlines are firm. So the, if you have registered for a course today, you have up until Monday, May 17th to make a full payment. If you do not make a full payment by that time, you'll be dropped. Registration with immediate payment runs from Tuesday, May 18th through Thursday, June 17th. Um, so if you registered for courses between March 2nd and May 17th, you have to pay your total balance owed for courses by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on Monday, May 17th to avoid being dropped from your courses. If you register for courses between May 18th and June 17th, you have to pay your total balance upon registering for those courses to avoid being dropped from all of your courses, even the ones that you may have paid in full for by May 17th. Um, again, if you are looking for an exception to that policy, it doesn't exist. Um, I'm happy to chat with you more about that process, um, but to avoid any kind of conversations like that, just you know, make sure you're, you're paying attention to the deadlines. And if you have any questions about tuition bills um, or payments, anything like that, again, give uh, Student Financial Services a call or an email. And I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Sean for some uh, more important dates and deadlines. Well, thank you so much, Ria. Um, so I do want to just kind of review some of the deadlines that Ria went through with everyone a moment ago, um, just to clear up any um, final questions that you guys might have about these, because I've seen some come through the Q&A um, over the past few minutes. Um, so our course registration deadline is Thursday, June 17th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Um, as Rhea said, we do not make any exceptions to this deadline. Um, it does happen every term that we do have students reaching out to us the next day um, who are trying to get into a course um, and asking us if we can register them or if they can register themselves. Um, but unfortunately, um, we and other offices throughout the division do not have the ability to go in and add students after that deadline passes. Um, so definitely make sure to mark that on your calendar so you can get registered in time. Our full payment deadline is Monday, May 17th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, some people have been asking in the chat, um, how is our registration deadline past our full payment deadline? So I just want to clarify that one more time. Um, if you are registering for any courses between today and May 17th, um, then you do have to make the payment for those courses by the full payment deadline of May 17th. Um, or you will be dropped from those courses. From May 18th through the course registration deadline of June 17th, we still have registration open, but that comes with the caveat of an immediate payment being due. So if you're registering for classes during that time, um, you can still do so, but you have to make a payment that same day or you're going to be dropped from your courses, um, as well as any courses that you have already paid for um, by May 17th. So we do have um, situations that happen with students that we unfortunately see um, where a student may have registered and paid for two classes before the full payment deadline. They add a third course um, between the payment deadline and the registration deadline, forget to pay for it, and their entire schedule is cleared. Um, so we definitely don't want that to happen to you guys. Um, so please make sure that you keep these deadlines in mind. Um, and if you have any hesitations or questions about anything as you're going through your registration and your payment, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, that's what we're here for, to help you through that um, and make sure that you feel comfortable with everything before the summer term starts. Um, if English is not your native language and you need to submit English proficiency documentation, the deadline to do that is Thursday, June 10th. That will still give our English proficiency team enough time to review your documents um, and determine if those satisfy the requirement. Um, if you do need to prove English proficiency, it's always better to submit those documents earlier rather than later, just because you're not actually going to be able to register for classes until our English proficiency team has verified the documentation that you send in to us. Um, so if you have a course in mind, you see that it's starting to fill up, um, definitely go ahead and get the English proficiency documentation to, into us now. Uh, we also encourage you to visit our website for the summer school, summer.harvard.edu. 
for the full academic calendar. We actually have three different calendars for the summer, depending on which um, period of time you're taking your course during. So there's an academic calendar for the seven week session, an academic calendar for the three week session one, and an academic calendar for the three week session two. So if you are looking to continue your education beyond the summer term through Harvard Extension School, um, just a couple of dates to keep in mind. We're hopeful that our course catalog will be available online um, at the Extension School website sometime in mid-summer. Um, we're actually getting ready to completely launch a new registration system. Um, so that is going to combine our course catalog and course registration system into one um, product that our students can use. Right now they're separate, which causes a little bit of issues, um, but this is gonna be a brand new streamlined process. So depending on the timeline of Im implementing that, we'll kind of determine exactly when our course catalog will post, but we are hopeful that will happen sometime mid-summer. Um, in terms of course registration, we are hoping to open that up to all admitted degree program candidates um, sometime in late July, and then to all other students sometime in early August. And our first day of classes um, is most likely going to be sometime before Labor Day weekend. Um, so looking at late August um, is the anticipated start of the fall term. Um, we are still in the process of finalizing all the details of our 2021 to 22 academic calendar. Um, so like I mentioned at the start of the webinar, um, we are appreciative of everyone's patience um, and understanding as we continue to monitor a lot of public health guidance before making um, these final plans for next academic year. Um, I want to close today just by sharing a really nice quote that we received from a student who attended Harvard Summer School last year. Um, last year, what we actually had to do exactly what we're doing this year because of COVID and run the summer school completely online. Um, so I think we were definitely curious to see how students felt about that and if they felt that their experience was still the same as if they could come to campus. Um, and we really did receive a lot of great feedback, not just from our adult students, but from our high school students as well um, about their experience taking courses online. Um, this student, as you can see on your screen, um, was really happy that they decided to go ahead and take the courses even with COVID going on. Um, I think you'll find, as this student mentions in their quote, um, we do have a lot of focus on original critical thinking in our courses. Um, and there's really something out there for everyone. Um, so whether you wanna just do courses for fun um, or if you want to pursue a certificate or a degree program, um, there are over 400 courses to choose from this summer. So we really hope that you'll take some time after today if you haven't already, just to explore the course catalog um, and see if there's anything that piques your interest that you'd like to start this summer. All right, so we're now gonna move into a brief Q&A period. Um, Rhea and I have actually gone through all the questions that you guys have submitted um, in advance of today's webinar. We tried to build in a lot of the answers to the questions in today's content. Um, so we've kind of pulled some of the extra questions to answer now that we didn't cover in the slides. Um, and then again, at the very end of the Q&A, we'll be showing our contact information. Um, for anyone who wasn't able to have a question answered today, please do email us or call us so we can get those ans uh, questions answered for you. All right, so I'm gonna take the first question, um, which is, can I transfer credits earned at Harvard Extension School or Harvard Summer School to another institution? Um, the answer to that is yes. Um, as I mentioned at the start of the webinar, um, especially with Harvard Summer School, we have a lot of students who um, take classes with us during the summer and their goal is to transfer those credits back to their home institution to earn credit. Uh, we just ask that students check in with their home institution to make sure that the credits will transfer appropriately. Um, every school is different with the transfer credits that they accept, um, but we do have a lot of students who have success in transferring those credits over. Um, with transferring credits within Harvard, that can be a little bit different. Um, Harvard is decentralized, so every branch of Harvard, like Harvard Medical School, Harvard Business School, Harvard College, uh, they all have their own policies and procedures in terms of credit transfers. So it's definitely, um, if you have your eye on moving from the extension school to maybe pursuing something within the college, um, definitely suggest reaching out to the different program coordinators for whichever program you're looking at um, to confirm with them if the credits will transfer or not. Um, and the second question we have here is, how much time should I plan to spend on my coursework uh, during the fall, spring, or summer terms? Uh, this is a question we get a lot. Um, for the fall and the spring, uh, th these are generally 15-week semesters, uh, so you usually meet once a week for two hours. Uh, if it's a language class or something more intensive, you might meet for four hours, so that's two to four hours of lecture time. Um, and then you should expect about the same amount 
for um, for your homework and any outside activities. So two to four hours of homework as well. Uh, for the summer term, we've mentioned this, it is way more intensive. You're shrinking a 15 week semester into seven, uh, seven or three weeks. So for the seven week semesters, you're usually meeting twice a week uh, for three hours. So that's about six hours time. Um, and then you should expect again, the same amount of homework uh, over the course of seven weeks, which would be uh, about 12 hours altogether. Uh, if you are taking a three week um, session, those are really, really intensive. Uh, you're meeting Monday through Thursday for four hours each day. Um, so that's what, 16 hours. Um, and then roughly, you know, 12 to 15 hours worth of homework during those weeks as well. Um, so they are in the summer, the equivalent of part-time jobs. Um, so just be aware of that as you are, as you are thinking about how much time you really do have to spend on this coursework. Our third question is, can I matriculate into a PhD program after graduating with my ALM degree from Harvard Extension School? Um, so we get a lot of questions from students asking about this, um, students who complete their graduate degrees at the Extension School and are wondering if they can transfer those over or if they set them up for success for earning an, another degree. Um, as I mentioned at the start of the webinar, the Extension School is accredited. Um, so your degrees are definitely valid and on the same level as other master's degrees that are given out throughout Harvard and then other institutions across the country. So you can definitely um, go to a PhD program after earning your ALM degree. We've had a lot of students have success with that um, in the past. Um, obviously with every PhD program, the admissions or requirements are different. So some may require like a GRE or more of those standardized test scores that you don't have to submit um, to earn your master's degree at the extension school. So we definitely just encourage you to look at the PhD program requirements, but know that your degree is definitely valid to move on to that next step if you choose to do so after graduation. And then finally, our number four here, um, can I join the Harvard Alumni Association after I graduate with my ALB and ALM degree program? Um, this is such an important question. And the good news is yes, yes, you can join the Harvard Alumni Association, which is super cool. Um, you also have access to the, uh, to the Harvard Extension Alumni Association. Um, if you get a uh, graduate certificate, you get, I think it's associate, membership to the Harvard Extension Alumni Association. You do not have access to the Harvard Alumni Association as a, as a certificate holder. Um, but the being part of the Harvard Alumni Association is super cool. Um, one of the things I'm looking forward to most is going to the, uh, the Harvard Club on Commonwealth Ave here in Boston and, and anywhere else in the country. Um, there's all sorts of cool networking events that happen for alumni as, for alumni as well. Um, so completing your degree with us as, as well as it being an actual Harvard degree, um, which is really, really cool uh, for, for folks who are perhaps non-traditional students uh, like you and I, um, you also get to have the cool benefit of, of sitting in something like the Harvard Club. Um, which lots of people have been able to do before this. So um, yes, you do get access to that. All right, so I did mention that we were going to be show sharing our contact information. Um, it looks like during our time together, we've been able to answer about a hundred questions, um, but we, I know we still have some open questions out there um, that we may not have time to get to with our remaining time today. So we do encourage you guys to reach out to the Office of Enrollment Services, which is where the office that Rhea and I work in, um, to have your questions that weren't answered today answered. Um, you can give us a call at 617-495-4024 um, anytime between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. Our office is closed on the weekend, um, so we're not available then. Um, you can also email us um, if you have extension school questions. You'll see the email for the extension school on your screen. And we also have one for summer school questions as well, just so we can keep those organized. Um, and typically, we'll be able to provide a response um, to your question, depending on how much volume we have coming in, um, between about one to three business days. It may be a little bit longer um, if you email us like late Friday or on the weekends, um, just because we, we have to catch up when we come back to the office on Monday. Um, but we'll definitely make sure that we get a, a quick turnaround time for your questions. Um, also, just want to share some additional resources because um, we realize that some of you may have more detailed questions about admissions or certificates. Um, so we already gave you our contact information for more of those general questions. Um, but if you're looking into like going through the admissions process and pursuing a degree program, um, you can always email admissions with questions at admissions at extension.harvard.edu. Um, or you can look into attending their virtual office hours. 
Um, there's no appointment necessary, um, and you can find all the information on our website about how to sign up for that. Um, with our certificates, you can send an email to our certificates team. Um, if our team isn't able to answer the email in enrollment services, then we'll pass it along to their team to answer. Um, there's separate email addresses for undergraduate and graduate certificates, um, as you can see on your screen. And they also offer open virtual office hours every Wednesday from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and there's a link on our website to get signed up for those so that you can have the Zoom link to tune in. All right, so we want to thank you all for joining us today um, for our April Extension School webinar. Um, we hope that it was some, some helpful information for you, um, no matter like where you're at in your academic journey, if you're ready to get started, or maybe you're just looking into it and considering it for the first time. Um, again, the webinar has been recorded today, so we hope to have that closed captioned and shared out with everyone next week. Um, because all of you attending right now have registered, that recording will come to you via email. Um, but if you have friends or anyone else who wants to check it out, we'll also be posting it for public viewing on the Harvard Extension School YouTube page next week as well. So thank you again so much for joining us. Um, and please don't hesitate to contact our office if you need anything in the future.